Hey guys, John here with some extra Nintendo Switch coverage for you. We have direct feed capture of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, along with some Splatoon 2. So, how do they stack up against the originals? Well, let's try and take a look, shall we? Starting with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is an interesting proposition here for sure. Basically what we have here is the complete Mario Kart 8 package with all of the content from the Wii U game, including the DLC tracks, along with some new characters packed into a single physical game card. This of course includes the new traditional battle arenas as well, which were lacking from this original version. And unfortunately that's all we have capture of here. But for collectors like myself, it is awesome to have the entirety of Mario Kart 8 on a single retail card, simply because it's one of the best Mario Kart games ever made, or at least one of my favorites. But what sort of technical improvements can you expect if you already own the game on Wii U? Well, first of all, we can see that the Switch version has been increased to a full 1080p at 60 frames per second. Of course, both versions do lack any sort of anti-aliasing here, but the Switch version is a lot sharper than the Wii U version when played on a TV, thanks to the higher resolution. Beyond that, though, it looks really, really good on the Switch screen itself, even though it drops down to 720p. The DPI is higher than what you get on the PlayStation Vita even, so it looks excellent. Very, very nice. In fact, I would say that this is probably the single most impressive looking racing game I've seen on any portable system to date. Seriously, say what you will about the power of the Switch, but it does make for a very impressive handheld system. But of course, the real question here is one of performance. Back when I first covered Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, I discovered an annoying issue, one that you can see repeated here. The game does not maintain a perfect 60 frames per second. Basically every 64 frames or so, you get a duplicate frame, which then manifests as a constant stutter or tick while playing the game. Now if you didn't notice it, great, but it was something that always stuck out to me right from the beginning, and it did impact the game at almost all times. The only time you could escape it is when playing the time trial mode without any other characters on screen. Which actually brings us to some good news here. The problem has been eliminated on Switch. Yep, we now have a rock solid, never wavering 60 frames per second on Nintendo's new console. Now, as you can see here, I can't exactly compare the same track since this battle arena doesn't exist on the Wii U. But both games exhibit this type of performance across all modes and tracks. And although I don't have capture of it, I did actually play some of the original Wii U tracks as well. And yes, they run every bit as smooth as what you're seeing here. Remember, what we're seeing on Wii U wasn't really slow down to begin with. The problem lies somewhere else in the code, and unfortunately it was never solved in a patch. But the key is that the Switch delivers a perfect frame rate here, and that is awesome. So yeah, the value proposition here with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is actually pretty good. A handheld version of Mario Kart 8 that plays at 1080p 60 on a TV, and includes all released content along with new stuff all while fixing the technical bugs from the original game. Plus, you can do things like playing split screen on the tablet itself when set on the table or, you know, things like that. It's, it's a great way to play Mario Kart 8. As for the rest of the visuals, well, again, I don't actually have any side-by-side -side footage that I could take back with me to compare. But from what I can see here, all of the effects and the general look of the game is maintained perfectly on the Switch. It's really just a resolution bump. But that resolution bump is certainly pretty nice, and it does contribute to a better overall looking game. Alright, so how about Splatoon 2 then? As a sequel, we have a new map here called The Reef, which looks a whole lot like the original game, I suppose. Yes, first impressions suggest that this is definitely a direct sequel, inspired to bring the game to a new audience. But Splatoon was awesome, so why not? Unfortunately, we're not really seeing the same kind of upgrade here as we have with Zelda and Mario Kart just yet. Splatoon 2 on the Switch runs at the same 720p resolution as the Wii U version with the same lack of anti-aliasing. So yeah, when you play it on a TV, it's a pretty jaggy looking game. But on the flip side, if you play it on the Switch's own screen, it winds up looking pretty nice. As with Mario Kart, it's pretty striking to see graphics like this on a portable console. Of course, the game itself retains the same colorful style and awesome paint system of the original game, and it of course runs like a dream. 
Splatoon 2 is a full 60 frames per second lock, even at this early point in development, and that's definitely something to remember here. This is pre-release software, which means by the time the game actually releases, we might actually get an upgrade. After all, if they're looking to hit 720p in the mobile mode at 60 frames per second, surely there is enough headroom to boost image quality further when docked. So while it may not be there yet, we're hopeful that things will improve by the time it launches, and maybe we'll even get to 900p or 1080p. One nice bonus here though is the ability to play using motion controls while using a pro controller. The original Splatoon makes awesome use of the gyros in the Wii U gamepad, but the pro controller for that system lack those features. That's not the case this time though, as the Pro Controller for the Switch contains its own set of sensors, enabling this style of play no matter which controller you opt for. I think that's a pretty nice bonus here actually. Oh, and crucially, the soundtrack seems like it's going to be awesome once again. But as of now, that's kind of all the Switch footage we have here. What do you guys think so far? In both of these cases, I feel like the games do feel like a souped up Wii U. There's no doubt about it. But these types of visuals on a handheld system can't be scoffed at either. Again though, Nintendo is doing here what Nintendo always does best, delivering a polished game at a very smooth frame rate. Even when considering the image quality limitations here, these games are designed to stand the test of time thanks to the fluid gameplay and loads of polish. If this is the kind of thing we can expect from Switch release as well, that's certainly a good thing. After all, the PlayStation Vita was a pretty strong system for its day, but a lot of the games released for it ended up running at relatively poor frame rates, which was always kind of a disappointment. Nintendo's commitment to high frame rates is key here, and I think that's what's going to help the Switch feel impressive over time. But that's all for now though. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. And until next time, this is John signing off.